What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Demset. Today we had a question in from X3 Legendary who wanted to know how to use a VPN and how to use a VPN in Backtrack 5. <laughs> So what actually is a VPN? A VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. So let's just run through what the words mean. So it's virtual, meaning it's not a physical network such as the internet. It's a private network, meaning only people included within the network rules actually have access to it and it's a network. So it's a group of computers working together essentially. So let's give a bit of a graphical representation of what a VPN what a VPN in the real world works as. So as you can see, I've got Microsoft Paint open here. Come on, me and my Microsoft Paint drawings, amazing. <laughs> um, but basically, if we draw a grey cloud here, which represents the internet, but, uh, yeah, that that's that's the internet. That that. <laughs> um, so the way your traffic flows at the moment is you'll have your client computer over here represented by a square and you have the uh, web server here which you'd want to connect to. So the way it works at the moment is you just do a direct connection from your ISP to the backbone and out of the cloud to the web server and the traffic would flow both ways like this. The problem with this is at each level of uh, the connection, there is a risk of a man in the middle attack. So if we just make these into more like tunnels, because that's the way I like to picture the internet as a series of tunnels. So data can flow backwards and forwards within here. What a virtual private network is, is actually an encrypted network. Let's choose a different color for this, we'll choose red. So what a VPN is, is an actual encrypted network which runs in, inside the internet and connects fr directly to the other machine. So why would you want to do this? One for anonymity. When you are connected to the VPN, if you this is your computer and you're connected to the VPN hosted here, you are essentially on the same network as this PC. So if this PC is in Russia, essentially, once you're connected, your PC appears as though it's from Russia. Also, VPNs are encrypted with pretty strong encryption. I think it's like AES-128, which means while you're connected to the VPN, your traffic inside of the network is pretty pretty locked down, pretty secure. It's, uh, it's not as susceptible to a man-in-the-middle attack. If a man-in-the-middle did look at this traffic, it would just appear as rubbish, unreadable uh, data. So what options is there for VPNs? On Windows, you've actually got something called Hotspot Shield. This was initially designed for people who use wireless hotspots a lot to, um, well, protect their connections from man-in-the-middle attacks. Problem with this is the free version is actually ad-driven, and I don't personally like adverts, uh, but there's actually a paid version of Hotspot Shield which has no adverts, so I'd recommend buying that if you're uh, going to be using it a lot of the time. There's also paid services such as MVPN who host fully anonymous VPN services. This is the kind of thing you'd want to go to for if you were going for purely anonymity with your VPN. It's pretty cheap, it's $6 a month, but definitely worth it if you're wanting some fully anonymous VPN hosting. MVPN can actually also be used inside Linux and that's what we're going to be using in the tutorial after the Windows one. MVPN actually runs on the OpenVPN software, which is something which is becoming more of a standard. And you're going to hear it repeated a lot when you're talking about VPNs on Linux, seen as OpenVPN servers run on Linux. So we're going to be uh, using MVPN for this demonstration, that anything which runs on OpenVPN will be very similar. And um, Personally, I prefer a paired service because one, you don't have any ads, and two, you get that peace of mind that you're actually going to get a quality service. So I'm going to go ahead and buy a MV MVPN account now, and after the Windows tutorial, which is up next, you'll see MVPN working inside of Backtrack 5. So to use a VPN on Windows is very easy. For this demonstration, I'm just going to be using uh, Hotspot Shield and Windows XP. The process is exactly the same on Windows 7 or Vista. 
or Windows 8 even, you just may have to run it as administrator. So I'm just going to double click the installer, run, and literally it's just next, next, finish. But obviously you're just going to uncheck all the, uh, well if you want the hotspot shield toolbars and stuff like that, you're welcome to include them. But I'm just going to uncheck them and it's just going to install all of this stuff. Uh, it's going to install its routing driver, which basically just means it's going to have its own uh, network adapter. As you can see, it's just been connected there. Yep, tap VPN install, uh, which is, from my experience, is just a uh, network adapter. Obviously a virtual one. Okay, so once that's it's installed, just hit finish, and it should start up. As you see, corner here, this has opened up, and it's going to connect to their VPN service. And as you can see, we're now connected. Yes, it is in an explorer, but that's all I've installed in this VM. Um, if we just do a what is my IP dot com. You could also change the settings down here. Um, this is what people don't really like. It kind of takes over your PC a little bit. It also puts adverts on stuff. And that is the VPN's IP address, not mine. You can barely see it. Uh, I'm guessing this is partly in an Explorer's uh, problem. But as you can see, it puts these headers on. These uh, ad headers on all of the pages you browse to. And this is how they make their money. If you don't like adverts like this, and I don't personally like them up here, um, then you'll have to go with the paired version. But from here, you've got pretty much anonymous browsing. Obviously, if you were doing something really bad, you're obviously trackable. It's just how much money it's worth for them to put in to track you down. Okay, so let's get into the actual question which spurred this video. How to use a uh, VPN inside Backtrack 5 R3 or R2. Um, the process is exactly the same in both. So what you have to do is, as I said before, I'm using MVPN and I urge you to do the same. When you go to, when you've bought the service from MVPN, they'll send you an email with a username and password. What you need to do is log into your client area on MVPN.net and uh, click to download the config file.zip. What you then want to do is open terminal, cd to where you've got it saved, so it's desktop for me, and then just type unzip config.zip, and as you can see the config there, if I actually went ahead and hit that, it just unpacked the files that I already have. So from here, as you can see, if I just do another ls, we've got the .ovpn file and also the specific files, both of the files we need there to um, get this proxy, not the proxy, the VPN working. So Guys, it, it's not, it doesn't get easier than this to start VPN in Backtrack 5. I thought it'd be a lot harder, but trust me, it really is this easy. So what you're going to do is type open VPN. Um, open VPN is automatically installed in Backtrack 5, but if it is, isn't, you can just do uh, apt get install open VPN. And if you run that, it'd run, run you through the configuration and how to get open VPN working in Backtrack 5. But as I said, in Backtrack 5R3 at least, it's already installed. If I type open VPN and then the .o VPN file that you were given, hit enter and it's going to ask you for your username. Um, that's e in the email, but if you actually look at the .o VPN file, that is actually also my username, so I'm going to type that in. Now this is going to ask me for my password, which came in the email, so I'm just going to type that in. And when I hit enter, all this configuration will happen here, and all you have to do is just wait. Until it says, uh, that it's ready. So as you can see, it's sending many of these push requests, and, uh, these push requests are actually the server telling your VPN software which route to use to get to the VPN. 
Oh, as you can see, initialization sequence completed. That's what we were looking for. So what we're going to do now is open up Firefox and go to what is my IP.org because the .com one seems to be down right now. And this should give us our, I, our uh, VPN's IP, which it has. And this should this IP here is in uh, California. So that's it, guys. It really is that simple. And to stop the VPN, all you have to do is just do Control C in this terminal window, and your VPN will disconnect. I thought it'd be a lot harder than that, guys, but it really is that simple. So I hope you found those tutorials useful. Uh, try to go in as, as much depth as possible, and when it comes to VPNs, they are pretty simple now with recent technologies, and uh, it's really is as simple as I've put in those tutorials. Hopefully, also I've answered your question there, X3 Legendary. Um, there is other NV, uh, open VPN services which are free, but obviously I go with a provider that I trust, and NVPN is a company that my friend has been using for many years, and he recommended them to me. So that's why I've gone with NVPN, but you can go with any provider that may host open VPN, um, VPNs, <laughs> not to sound too redundant, but um, there must be open VPN for the backtrack tutorial to work, because that's just the way it works. There may be other ways to do it, but that's the way I use. So I hope you've enjoyed the, these tutorials, and I hope you've enjoyed the information that I've told you about VPNs. If you could leave a like to show your support, maybe subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any more questions, feel free to go to the uh, forums over at demsec.co.uk and I uh, will answer them for you. Um, you can also join the forums and chat to people. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. If you like our videos, why not register over at our forums, www.demsec.co.uk. There you can find other tutorials submitted by community members. You can also ask myself and other members questions. I'll see you over there.